morning. I'm back. Hi, Dad. I hope that we've sorted out all the problems that we had last time and that we're getting a much better picture today. And uh, I welcome you all to the second in the talk, second uh, subject in the talk, which is talking about art. Just before we start, I believe that my daughter in, 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 in England is also watching. Hi, Dad. Hi, and hi, hi, everybody else. Thank you for coming. I want to start to give you an idea of where art began. And you know that human beings immigrated from Africa and then started a million years ago to drift all over the world. But the one that won in the end, the one that came out on top was humus, uh, Homo sapiens the wise one. And Homo sapiens, in fact, came from here. They came from down there in the east, western, in the eastern Cape, and drifted all the way along here and came to the north. Those were the people that most resemble us in terms of what they do, in terms of their thinking, in terms of everything. And what is important to know and what makes them very different to the Neanderthals and all those, those other groups that were around with whom we eventually intermarried. What makes all the difference is that they already had art. They already were decorating things, were making things very, very beautiful when they were doing something and generally made all their tools and everything like that. And that was more than 100,000 years ago, some say 200,000 years ago. And, and the, the, what we have found, what they found in discoveries not all that long ago, is that Lumbos Cave in the Cape, in the, in the Western Cape, in the Eastern Cape, had all these engraved items there, little bits of this, little bits of that with diamonds drawn across them, interlinking, real patterns that human beings were making. What they found further was that these people were already mixing ochre, which is a kind of a metal, uh, uh, iron oxide clay. They were mixing that in, in, in shells and that sort of thing, and they were putting it, on, rubbing it onto those items and probably, I imagine, onto themselves. So isn't that fantastic to know that it all began here? The first humans were happened in South Africa. Art was invented in South Africa. But the one thing that's very important is that nobody ever knew about this thing called art. Art was an outcome of those Ten Commandments that traditional people turn into three, which were continuity, order, and respect. Art was a respect part of it. Art was the part that actually made you respect what you were eating, what you were celebrating, what you were doing. So I've made some notes here, which I must be careful that I don't stream away from them. So let's, let's ask ourselves a question, what is art? Now, art in the Western sense, because there wasn't such a word in Africa, art in the Western sense basically means that you've been to school, you've studied, and that sort of thing, and you have an understanding of what somebody decided were the rules of art. Now, that group was up there somewhere. They were all studied people. They all grown out of the Renaissance and they were all started to use art as a kind of status symbol and as a kind of uh, historical reflection or political tool to show how important they were. They wrote history through art. 
of the battles they won, of this they did, of that, how important they were and how they weren't ordinary people down the bottom there. They only ate fruit from the trees and not from the ground. Isn't that wonderful? In the meantime, there was other art happening everywhere, but it was called folk art. It's what those people down there do. It's very nice, and I've got a few pieces of that, but it's not art. So we want to go back to what those homo sapiens decided right in the beginning, what art actually is. And what we call, we give it a different name. We call it Ubuntu art. It is the art of sharing. The art of expressing ourselves. The art of dealing with life and all its pain and all its joy and all its hopes and wishes. That's what art is about. And we believe that one of the underlying, the most real, the underlying rules of art is beauty. So I think it begins with beauty. The beauty of celebrating yourself together as a group and dance. The beauty of what happens in the morning when the day is the night is closing and the day is starting and suddenly this beauty appears or in the evening and it appears in a different way and sinks away into the night and we start to realize that color is a driving force of beauty so we start to see that color dominates everything and this is one of the reasons why those colonizers who arrived here had such success in, in uh, uh, breaking into the communities initially is because they had permanent color. And from that developed the kind of art history that we have around us here and that we're sharing with you in this museum, which is the art which is to show what the indigenous people, with those three commandments, what they did with the art. So let's have a look at the pain that was in the art, that actually, in the community, that actually produced fantastic results. And I, because we're sitting in this room, I think one of the very important things I want to show you is behind me, this display behind me. If you look at these things on the wall there, they are all capes that a married woman wears when she moves into the home of the, the, the new family, into the, into the, of the male. It is worn like this. On the back of it, just for interest, that she is pregnant, expecting her first child. It is worn like that, and she looks like an armadillo. Everybody, all her friends together, they all make a piece that actually gets added to that, and, and some of them are ideal. Let me show you now. Yeah, I have one here. Whoops. Some of these pieces may reflect purely where she comes from, who she is, and that sort of thing. Others are because she's a woman, and the woman's role in the new family is to wear this document, and this is a letter to the family of the husband. So this one can read. And the beautiful thing is that you can, it's written as messages between people, but when people say to you that there was no writing, you must realize that this is all writing. It's writing in terms of 
pictures, it's writing in terms of colors, it's writing in terms of how colors stand next to each other. It is the most amazing way of writing that unfortunately, although it's only 50 years old, you know, it's 70 years, 80 years old, it's already disappearing. We don't know how to read these things anymore. So let's look at some of these things. Let's look at those, and, and many of those things you'll see there's writing. What does it say in the writing? It says, I cannot sleep in an unroofed house. It's a message to the husband. It's a message to say, you've gone to the mines. You've gone to work elsewhere, because that was part of the colonial kind of drive to get labor. People had to go and work in these things. So an unroofed house basically means he's got to put something into that house. Send money. Bring this. Do that. You've got children here. Other things here say in writing say, uh, don't talk behind my back. So this, these are women's rights. Women are standing up for themselves in terms of these things. These, these pictures over here say the same thing. They often describe the journey that she will take. You will see things there about the trains, the crossing where the train leaves, this and that, and the houses, there are different houses, the shapes of houses that mean that Johannesburg, there are different kinds of shapes of houses that means it's, it's on, the, on the farm. So basically, there's a huge letter here that she actually produces to the next family and says, I'm joining you, but these are my conditions. You take responsibility for me and my family. Isn't that one amazing? Now, when the colonials arrived, they obviously the first thing that arrived were priests. Now, our art here, the traditional art was a geometry art, an art of geometry. We did not represent life because that would be interfering with the ancestors who create life. So geometry was what drove you. You would never show a face on anything like that. It, it, it would, that would be mystical. That would be dealing in another world. So what you did, you made patterns. You made patterns. You made patterns. This is the name. This is the, the, the clan's name. So you made patterns. But then these, the, 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 the monks arrived and, and, and started going into the community and they said, uh, we must make you a Christian first before you can actually start on this whole thing. And quite a lot of them said, well, you know, if I get something to eat and, and, and you're teaching me a skill, why not? You know, and, and, and in the modern churches now, modern African churches have said, well, let's bring the two things together again, Christianity and the ancestors, which already even the Bible exists. So they started creating sculptures that were related to the church. Very, very, very beautiful sculptures, as you can see, that's St. Thomas. They started, missions started opening. Teaching, printing. And here you can see, this is the Sermon of the Mount. And that was in the 1960s and 1950s, and that was the influence of the missionaries. Many of the artists, grew out of that sign, and these very same people that were producing this, and they can do this at night with no, with no lights on, because they've been doing it so long and they're so good at it. But the same guy nowadays does this. Look at this. It still shows that respect for the plant and for where it came from, but it is about life. It is about celebration. Others 
Or in the meantime, taking that school. And they were saying, there's pain here. Help, help. Because times were getting so much harder and, and, and the men weren't sending anything from, from, the, uh, from their, their mining jobs. The, 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 the government was squeezing everybody for more and more money. It was a terrible time. And we start to see those Christian decorative things coming out and saying, there's pain here. There's pain. There's pain. There's pain. Aren't they? Powerful, powerful statements. So and the artists developed and, and art at the same time, you used your skills to make a living. And so you started to, to look for ways of actually using these skills and from the basket making time with rather faded designs on that, as you, as you can see here, eventually, different materials arrive and that's the, the wonderful thing about culture it's that you absorb all these wonderful uh, tricks and items and ways of doing skills and you combine them in terms of your beliefs what you think is important the geometry the color the flowers when they pop out just for that short, or the butterflies that pop off for that short, 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 short moment before they reproduce themselves. That's all. That's what art is. It is a celebration of those moments, of tough moments that happen. That sort of thing. So eventually, artists are making a living from changing things and creating their own amazing history and experience among, to make beautiful things like this with this uh, uh, which is basically a lid a beer bottle lid which is turned into a flat plate and look at the wonderful wonderful design and joy in the whole thing here's another one see again how beautiful beautiful these things are now we come, we come a little bit closer. We come a little bit closer. And I've shown you this. And we start getting quite sophisticated people now who, who are really going out there and not just for themselves and for their own, but they actually are starting to use art to liberate themselves. They start going out, go there and say, art is about liberation, I want to feel good because I'm liberated. So every time you make a statement like this, you are liberated. Every time you make a statement that might like it was in the end, just be a poster with writing on it, angry writing with poems on it that, that any academic would fault by all sorts of, uh, under all sorts of standards, but you are liberating yourself with your art. We believe that is, that is still one of the functions, the important functions of art. Today, we are still surrounded by amazing people. They're saying the same things. Look at this. Look at this incredible work here. Oh, 
I think it's a southern Sutu, although I don't know why he's got earplugs on, but the southern Guni thing, them riding an ox, the whole family on the ox. There's a woman walking away, carrying her usual load on, the, on their head. And it's all about women. It's all about that pressure between women and men. Look at this one. She's carrying all the load. Isn't that a wonderful, a wonderful thing? The idea of using the products and using everything that you find around you actually is particularly relevant today because artists in the, in the poverty stricken South Africa, artists have to use anything to make a, uh, to, to make a living. So look at this gentleman here. Look at this work of art. It's made out of potato chip packets. And basically, it's a, it's a wall hanging that we've collected here because we think he's a genius. His skill, his love for color, the beauty of the whole thing, we believe it's the moon. And the moon is the thing that brings peace. Because I think what we love about, oops, I want to sit down here. What, what we love about this art is the way I started collecting it. You first of all, you're just drawn to it because it's so beautiful. Then you're drawn to it because it's so skilled. I think most people, many people come here because these things are so skilled. Then you are drawn to it because apparently it means something. All these little things, there's depths and depths and depths and those things. When these women are wearing, once she's, once she's moved into the house and the new daughter, her daughter starts to celebrate, starts to become marriageable age, she will take that same cape and take out what she wants to tell her next husband. And they have these fantastic dances. You know, it's all about dancing. It's, it's all about body art. We will talk about that later. But body art is a celebration where everything comes together. This is wall art. That's an invention of a much later date. Now, the, the first hour in South Africa, we also have the Bushman paintings. And those are incredibly interesting because they also start about 10,000 years ago. But there's evidence of much older work. And we believe that even that art actually began in Africa and then moved north. So here we are. What does all this do for us? We believe that there is an African art. An African art that is a private art. That celebrates the human being. It's an art, an art form that actually basically works best when it's done in a group, and this is where the, the what's name comes from, where uh, uh, the old Ubuntu title comes from, because it's when you're working together. And this is our title of the, of the, of the museum, the Ubuntu Art Museum, and we hope that generally all folk art, that terrible name that has been dished out by these Renaissance people and everybody that followed and, the, and by which artwork in South Africa is still being judged. 
we must never forget that when the art of the Renaissance, the political art of the haves, the, 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 uh, the art of superiority, when that fizzled out in the 1880s, 1870s, what did they reach out to? They reached out to folk art, to that art that they've been looking down at all the time. And which wasn't really art, it was what they generally goes under the name of craft. Even many people who come to this museum still say it's a craft museum. You'll find it very interesting, my and those people that live with their hands. So we basically, our argument is that because we were the source of art at first, many years ago the Homo sapiens arrived, and we continue to be the source of art because we believe that the more world of art liberates itself from this preconception that art has to be some specialist thing that is owned by somebody, Let's make it belong to everybody. Let's make it the art of the people. Everybody is an artist. Every time you make a decision that is new, that is creative, that you think out of the box, you're an artist. So I think maybe you should ask me some questions. And then we can talk some more about where we're going from here. So, so thank you, thank you very much again for 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 looking at this, this, uh, these works. Let's just talk a little bit more about that whole Renaissance trip and the evolution of our art, of art in South Africa. Basically, we feel, I feel that what has happened in, in, in South Africa or in Africa is that people have been intimidated for so many years to believe that they are, mm, they don't come from Europe. So they don't have that wisdom. I believe that we must have to celebrate African art again. We must go out there and actually, and, and the people who need to celebrate it are Africans. And that is what we find in South Africa that Basically, our problem, our big job here at this museum is to make people respect themselves. Because the whole world has been working, and especially since the arrival of liberation, of democracy, the world has poured into there in order to steal the culture, the cultural basis of Africa. Anything that you do is compared with something from elsewhere, not from this continent. Everything that you respect comes from elsewhere, not from this continent. It is time, we believe, it is time that we, that we start to begin to change and our attitude and the Africans to be start to begin their attitude. This is what we fight. This is what our museum is about. And this is hopefully what I know you probably all know that anyhow, but the depths of African art, its source and its development and its ability to accept any culture provided you remain African in your soul. And that, we believe, is what's being stolen away from Africans. 
and it is very difficult because those those sieves have every every gadget and everything available to them to brainwash the society into believing that what you really need to do is to belong to the Renaissance and its development. And yet the Renaissance and its development had a pathetic ending when it actually found that it had nothing else to say because the tools of, of the society were geared, were, were there to actually present it in a different way. The camera arrived and all these things arrived. And today when we look around and we see our African art, whether it is there in, in America or wherever it is, and it, how it, it's major, major influence that still exists. Where would we be today without art that grew, that, that was given birth by Africa, like the slavery? Most of, the, most of the subjects that we do now are actually arisen out of that. It's the triumph of adversity that creates art. Now, please have your questions. There's somebody creeping out of here now. Can you hear me? Dad, sorry, can you hear me? Sorry, I, I can't hear. Um, there's a couple of questions on the chat. Sorry? There's a couple of questions on the chat. Um, I, I, I can't hear. Okay. Uh, I'm interested to know, how, to know, did artists like Elliot Mkise consider himself an artist or a crafter? That's, uh, that's from Elis. Well, Elliot and Keys, uh, the, the, these are some written questions, I think, are they? Yeah. So I'm sorry that we can't seem to hear what your questions are, but the written question we have here, does Elliot and Keys, Elliot and Keys is the master of wire plate making, which should result in something in, the, in front of that thing there. Yes, Can you see this? <laughs> Elliot McKees certainly thinks, well, you know, he, he, he feels very good about himself designing and that sort of thing. And if you can sell this thing, call me a crafter, call me anything. Uh, but he, he's proud and he's inventive and he's creative and he loves what he does. And the son is doing the same thing and the whole family is, is doing it. So I would, I would say that he is an Ubuntu artist. Uh, he's creating opportunities for himself to survive through his skill, which is a completely African skill. And the difference between what he does and what is done nowadays, nowadays these wire plates are designed in, in, in London or in Paris or somewhere for, by big stores and we are just using people to make them. And those, those people, I think, are not artists. Those people might be considered crafters. But, you, you know, whatever it is in, in their brain, it might be a different thing. Uh, and, um, Sorry, the next question. Andrea Musta has a good, uh, good morning, Paul. Are there any museums outside Devon that visitors to Zululand can also visit when they come to our province? Well, the, the, we have a sort of close relationship. Their visitors want to know uh, if there are any other museums like us around there. Uh, certainly, the, the uh, museum in Ishawi, which is 100 kilometers, 150 kilometers north of us, uh, has a beautiful, it's a museum village, but it has a beautiful museum solely uh, dedicated to baskets. So if one really wants to see how this basket 
what happened to it when new materials came onto the market, when you, the, the role of this, this basket, its geometry and everything that, it, that is meaningful there changes when dyes come, proper dyes come on there because the original dyes that were available in Africa were fading all the time. Flowers only flowered for a short while. And so, and because these things were really, it was fine to have, have something that faded off a little while because you made another one. But as soon as the concept of permanence comes into things, you actually want things to last. But remember, most of the Nguni people were traveling people. They, they didn't take things along there. They made new things when they arrived somewhere else. So one of the ways of making it last was to use artificial dyes. Uh, initially, and uh, these these were uh, people were very pleased about those because they were exciting, they were colourful, and that sort of thing. But then the, the the missionaries moved in and they were trying to create markets for these people overseas, and they said, no, 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 we must go back to the other dyes. So whatever you find today, I had a basket there. Can you, can you give me that basket? A little one. Uh, whatever we find today are basically baskets that have been made yeah, that one, yeah, for the overseas market. For the overseas, but very beautiful, very beautiful. If you see how, how beautifully they are made and, and that sort of thing. But we must remember that these things have been made for another market. Even I believe, I think the design here is probably more American Indian than it is traditional South African. Uh, but nevertheless, it, it's a wonderful world to work in. What, give me another question there. Thank you. No other questions. Any questions? Ask if there, uh, if there are any other questions. Are there any other questions? We have three minutes. No, so uh, I'm, I'm sorry, we're still learning how to use this whole, whole machine. Uh, I think uh, I, I uh, yes, I want to tell you that we are really struggling to survive. And it would be very kind if you have no people, access to people, and that's what they mean. If you want to support us, Please do. We need it. We need it. We now have to put our people on part time, and so. But thank you very, very much for for coming today, and I hope that I made some sense. Most important thing is love it. It's beautiful. The art around here is so original and so beautiful. Get into it. Thank you very much. Bye. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I think. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, wait. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're really interesting. Thank yes. you. Okay. Yes. Let me go. And I must thank this gang of uh, mine here. Okay. Thank you puts all this together, it is really amazing. I just have to come in and, <laughs> and they've made me not look less, they made me look less like an ancestor this time. Uh, because, uh, you know, ancestors are bleached white. So I had, to, I had to change my shirt and put on this shirt because the other one was white and that was <laughs> even worse. So, bye. Okay. bye Oh wait, hold on, someone's trying to say something. Let me just put on the video. Oh yes, Paul, come back. I think someone's trying to say something. There we go, Jane is saying something. Sorry, just repeat that. She's on mute. She's on mute. She's on mute. The sound is not working. Sorry, our sound is weird. <laughs> Can you hear me? Can Anna, can you hear me? Okay. No. <laughs> if you, if you can...
Just let's look at this. I think everyone's saying bye now. Let's just oh, okay. no, Ilsa, I was on mute. Hi. <laughs> Hi, other Anna as well. Hi, Paul. Hi. <laughs> can you hear can you hear me, Anna? Hey. Yes, now I can. Okay, now because I've got this bloody thing, I thought maybe I was talking over the thing. <laughs> I could hear you. I could hear you since I think the end of the talk. Yeah, Jane, can you? I think you're still muted, Jane. You were you were trying to say something. I was trying to say. Jane, you're mute. there. You're unmuted. So, no. No, I, I wasn't really saying. I can't hear you. I no. Find some Funny. Room, because this is an yeah. endless subject. One can talk about this and. and, and uh, I can see pictures now. There's Ashantiere down there. She's also looking. Uh, so thank you very much for, for coming. And, and, and just, this is such an amazing thing. And, and we, we help us to turn the world onto it. There's so much that we can learn yeah. from. There's so much depth. And that depth doesn't mean to say we need to university. Remember, Homo sapiens means wise people. Homo sapiens doesn't mean people who've got a certificate. Yeah. Homo sapiens means people who think. And outside the box. Homo sapiens ex boxy. I think we'll call them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm thanks. glad this is still recording, Paul. <laughs> yeah, it's still recording. The <laughs> gem. <laughs> okay. Ilsa, lovely to see you. Yeah, lovely to see I'm you too, Anna. To see Thank you, Paul. I'm spreading the word. I'm telling, I've got Jane to join today, which is lovely. <laughs> so we'll keep it, keep it going. <laughs> and, and Paul, I think the half an hour is really short, but I know you can keep talking forever, so I suppose there are limits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm going to head off. Yeah. Cheers, Anna. Bye, lots of love. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.